Hey Shelby Bells, it's Shelby. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in for another video. Hey Mr. Kitty. I just put treats up there so they're like going for the treats. Uh, in today's video, you guys, we have to talk about Gabby Hanna. This was not the video that I thought you guys were going to be seeing today. Um, actually, I was all caught up on making videos for until like Monday, right? Until Labor Day. I was all caught up on videos until Monday, but then drama pops off and you guys know that I have to give you the tea when it's hot. So drama never sleeps. That means neither do I. I actually thought I might be able to get some sleeping done this week because I was all caught up on the drama, but you know, drama never sleeps. So here we are. As you guys know, Gabby Hanna, was in a lot of drama the past couple weeks. She had a manic episode, a scary manic episode, where she posted over like 200 TikToks. And it was a really, really sad, scary situation. There was a guy who like kind of knocked on her door during the whole thing, all of it's on film. He went into her house, a stranger asked to use the bathroom then proceeded to film in her house. It was really kind of creepy and scary. Gabby Hanna said some really, off the wall, not okay things, borderline, no, actually racist things um, during this manic episode she was having. And it was, Mr. Kitty, <laughs> are you a big boy in there, Mr. Kitty? He is, he's a big boy. Sometimes I get scared he's gonna get stuck in there, but he's gotten himself out plenty of times, so I guess he's okay. Yeah, but Gabby Hanna was saying some really, really crappy things, some board, like racist things, some really just like not okay things during this manic episode of hers. And you guys, not surprisingly, now all like 200 of those TikToks are missing. And she has put up a, um, a series of TikToks called About Last Week, and she's posted three of them at the time of me filming this video, so I thought we should talk about it. There might be more. If there's more that she posts after I get done filming this and I am editing it and stuff, I will put those into the video so you can see them. But as of right now, I have seen four of them, and I have some thoughts on it. So if you're interested in hearing more about that drama, make sure that you keep on watching. Okay, guys, before we get into today's drama, if you are new here, my name's Shelby. I'm the crazy cat lady of the drama community here on YouTube. I bring you the tea seven days a week with the help of my investigative research team, Mr. and Miss Kitty. This is Mr. Kitty. He is part of one of two of my investigative research team. Mr. Kitty is really the face of the operation here. Um, he loves to be on camera. He loves his new cat treat. He loves to be on camera, loves to be held, loves to be pet, and he's such a looker and he knows it. He's a looker and he knows it, okay? Miss Kitty is um, a beautiful, chunky, calico beauty she doesn't like to be held very much but you will see her sometimes jumping up here to hang out with me sometimes she's up here you will see miss kitty as well miss kitty is more like the receipt finder of the two miss kitty is very thorough with her research she gets all the receipts and everything she she, she takes a lot of pride into um into the business and into getting the receipts for you guys she loves it so much mr kitty Mr. Kitty, I'm sorry, I have to tell him. You already know I have to tell him. But the thing is, I will tell him that you're getting better at it, okay? Okay, so Mr. Kitty, he isn't honestly the best at getting the receipts. Sometimes Mr. Kitty gets a little bit um, excited, if you will, or erratic, and he doesn't necessarily get all the full story sometimes. Sometimes he gives you clickbait. Sometimes he gives half-truths or maybe stuff that's not just, the story's not complete yet, but he gets just so excited. And so he, you know, wants to give you the receipt. And so I just, you know what, I always give him a shot and I say, okay, Mr. Kitty, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you give him the receipt and they'll let us know in the comment section down below if it's clickbait. So he knows and he's open to your feedback. And honestly, this is a brand new situation. So honestly, this might be a half-truth. This might not be the full story, Mr. Kitty. But Mr. Kid, I told him, like I told you, if if you give me the receipt, baby, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a shot, and that's what we're doing, okay? Okay, so Mr. Kitty, fill us in what happened. Okay, so Gabby Hanna, all of the TikToks are wrong. That's what you're telling me. Well, that is a lot of TikToks to delete, Mr. Kitty. Wouldn't you say so? I know it is. I know it's true, baby. Okay, so. Okay, so you're telling me that she deleted all of them and she posted this like three-part video explaining what happened last week. You wanna roll it for him, right? Okay, Mr. Kitty, well, we're gonna roll it for him, so roll it. I wanna take a minute to address just a little bit of last week. So, yes, I was manic. I am bipolar, I've talked about it. You can scroll back 
it's no secret I'm bipolar but I've never experienced a manic state I've only ever experienced a hypomanic state so that was actually a brand new thing for me that I was experiencing in real time uh, with all of you guys but it didn't start that way it started with me doing some spoken word poetry and trying to talk about things that I care about which are homelessness and dying children and the environment and also talk about the overlap of religion and aliens and mental health and dimensions and all of these different concepts like karma and how we've politicized them and made them into these weird culty controlling type things when in reality we're mostly just using different language for the same thing where i feel shit started getting really intense was when that guy came to my door and asked me to use my bathroom and i know that a lot of people were like why the fuck would you let a stranger in your house but from where i was sitting i try to be kind wherever i can so it was like 9 30 in the morning and i was on the phone with my friend and some guy has one earbud in and he's kind of sweaty and he says i was just on a run and um i was wondering can i use your bathroom and i sized him up and he asked him his age he's 27 years old and uh he was wearing pretty tight clothes i could see that he didn't have any like guns or didn't see any weapons on him so my bathroom is right by the front door so i was like sure you can use the bathroom and then when he came out of the bathroom, I was still on the phone with my friend and he asked me if I wanted to hang out. And I said that I couldn't because I had plans for the day. And he said, what are you doing? And I said, well, first I'm gonna go for a run. And he asked if he could go for a run with me. And I said, well, I really prefer that to be my alone time. That's where I really meditate and think and pray. And then he asked if he could pray with me. And my friend was still on the phone. I asked him if he wanted some coffee. So um, I got his prints, I got his DNA. I had him say his full name on the phone. I really felt like I was protecting myself just in case this 27-year-old scrawny-ass guy was going to try something. He knew that I had his prints and his DNA and also a witness to his name and the fact that he was there. So as he kept pushing to hang out with me after I told him that I wasn't interested, I asked him basically, you know, do you have any friends? Like, are you okay? Because he was like shaking and now I know why. It's because he was doing something incredibly disgusting and manipulative and he was nervous about it but he told me he didn't have any friends and he was feeling really alone and I'll explain more in part two so then I put his name and his face on the internet so I'm like there's no way this guy could be that dumb to do something like I feel pretty protected again it's 9 30 in the fucking morning like there's people in and around my house like I had the windows open like what I didn't think that he was going to like murder me or like hurt me or something like that but then he followed me upstairs after I very specifically told him to stay downstairs. And that's when I was like, okay, this kid is pushing a boundary. This isn't safe. So then I filmed him again and I just kept putting him on the internet to remind him that there are people watching him and to not do anything stupid. So then I get a text from a bunch of friends actually. And they're like, hey, I don't know who the fuck you think that guy is in your house, but get him the fuck out because he's posting in your house. So I was like, okay. Let me get this kid the fuck out of my house and that's where you saw me scream get the fuck out of my house and then he left so after i kicked him out of my house i was like pretty shaken and like hurt to be honest because like this city is so fucking evil like straight up and like no matter like what happens to me like i still fight so hard to just like try to do the right thing and the kind thing because i don't want to be one of those people who turns people away in their moment of need like if you're out walking and like you're like fuck i have to use the bathroom like this guy literally said to me like yeah i almost went on the street but like there's kids that play out here and that's pretty gross and there's literally a sign down where i go for a run sometimes where somebody literally wrote like kids play here please don't pee here literally so i'm like yo this guy literally just wants to use the bathroom i don't want to be the person who slams the door in a stranger's face when they're asking for like a bare minimum need. Like this guy didn't want to whip out his dick in public and pee where kids play. I thought that was like a pretty respectable thing. Now we all know that that is not the case. But after I kicked him out, I was like really shaken. Like I was upset. 
I just put on some music. I went in my room. Sorry, I'm trying not to get emotional about this, but it is upsetting. So I was just like pacing around in my room and like trying to calm myself down. And then I hear banging at my door and I thought it was him. So I just set my alarms on my phone and then I hear banging and banging and banging. And then I got my glass break alarm that went off on my phone. And then I got the critical alarm that went on my phone, which means somebody has now broken and entered into my house. And then I heard this loud bang downstairs, which I thought sounded like a gunshot, but I didn't know. But either way, there was a loud bang. My worst case scenario that just happened is that kid broke back into my house. My private armed patrol came, found him and shot him. So I was just sitting in my room like hyperventilating and then I hear people calling my name at the bottom of the stairs like Gabrielle, Gabrielle, part three coming. So I asked them who is it and they said it's the police. So I come down like I don't know if they're lying or not because I don't know if whoever just fucking broke into my house is lying about being the police but I just had faith that it was because what else do you do so i come down the stairs i see four of the five officers standing right at the bottom and i was like what's going on and they're like we're just here for you we're just here for your safety at this point i still don't know what's going on i don't know if i'm gonna walk in on a dead body i don't know like if this kid was on the run like i literally have no fucking idea what's going on or how there's all of a sudden all of these cops in my house what felt like moments after this kid left like i actually don't know the exact time. I know he got here around 9.30. They got here between 10 and 10.30. I don't really know how long he was in my house, but they asked me to turn around on the stairs and then they cuffed me. And I said, why am I being put in cuffs? And they just kept saying, it's for your own safety. It's for your own safety. So then they had me sit down in this chair and I'm like, what's going on? And they're still not answering me. They said that they're still just trying to do this for my safety. So then I'm like, oh my God, was this kid actually like a murderer or a rapist on the run? That would make total sense that maybe this kid came in because he was hiding from something like they literally wouldn't tell me anything so my mind is just filling in all these blanks so I said oh wait oh my god I think I know why you're here like what happened like is that that guy and then they're just like what are you talking about so then I found out they have no fucking idea who this guy even is and they're here on something completely unrelated so now I'm just like what are the fucking odds that these two things would happen so closely together so they just keep reminding me we're here for your safety I just have to ask you again and again and again they kept asking me do you want to hurt yourself do you want to hurt anybody else and I said no and they said well why do we keep getting calls and I said I tell you guys every time you come it's just trolls but like they have no internal communication and that's the problem is like i believe that a lot of the cops that show up have good intentions they're just doing their job but they don't communicate with each other so now i'm the target of the police getting angry that calls are coming in about it i just got another call yesterday when i was leaving the gym for another wellness check and i'm like can you guys i literally i told the lady on the phone i was just detained for two hours in my home and then two more detectives showed up and two more police showed up and then another cop showed up like do you guys have any internal communication or am i just going to be harassed for the rest of my life on these wellness checks because i'll tell you what the cops for the past month are what triggered me into my very first fucking manic episode I think an important piece of this story too that I should acknowledge is that I was and I'm an adult I'm in California it's legal I only smoke weed I'm not on any prescriptions outside of my acne medication I've been prescribed for my ADHD in the past I tried it last summer I decided it's not for me but weed for me is more of a shroom trip which is why I don't fuck with shroom try I've never tried because my weed experience is very hallucinogenic and also very spiritual which is fine if you're just chilling in nature or my pool or my jacuzzi or on a walk in my neighborhood or trying to meditate or creating or painting weed's great right when you're being constantly hounded by police and now you're also triggering all these trauma responses because i do have cptsd and y'all i've been through some shit i have had a knife pulled on me and my second grade teacher came out and saved me, Mr. Gun. What, what? I have stood between a gun and children. That's a real story. That's not something that I made up. 
I was a victim of childhood abuse. As an adult, I was a victim of domestic violence. I'm a survivor. I've been through some fucking shit. I smoke some weed and I process it. But when there's people with guns and people lying to you, saying they need to use your bathroom and secretly filming you and like, the tabloid shit that I've been through through the years and just like rumors and lies and like death threats and getting eight page handwritten scathing letters to my fucking door and like emails of people saying they're gonna dig up my grandmother's body and her saying my little sister's a dirty little they're gonna rip her saying that they know when I'm gonna be where and like literally some of the threats I've gotten like I've looked up the people and they're literally convicted fucking like dangerous people like it's scary and before i've been paranoid i've definitely been paranoid but my paranoia was always justified but there just gets a point where you're like your reality and your time starts bending and it feels like nobody's listening to you and it does feel like everybody's attacking you because a lot of people are so yeah <laughs> some shit happened in my brain that now like i'm sad and i'm hurt and I'm embarrassed, but like it happened and now there's nothing to do but just like move on from it. And I do want to say that three of the five officers were like really kind and helpful. And I think a lot of it is just like they're not trained to do this and police should not be called if somebody is in like a mental health crisis because I wasn't in a mental health crisis until... I was like being bullied by people with guns about a mental health crisis. So now that I've acknowledged that, yes, internet, you are right. I was manic and I didn't know it at the time as most people in a hypomanic or manic state don't recognize it until they're out of it. And personally, I've never experienced anything mentally like I was experiencing. And I do plan on writing down in detail exactly what I was experiencing because it was not what the rest of the world was experiencing. And that being said, I also am not going to invalidate my own spiritual experiences because I do still believe in the divine. I've always on my platform talked about being psychic and made a lot of videos about my ghost stories and that stuff is still real to me. I am a psychic medium. You either believe in mediums and ghosts or you don't. So that part's not going away. And I am going to stop smoking weed because while it used to be a shroom trip to me, it now appears to be some type of DMT trip and it's just too intense for me. So I guess I'm just like a fucking sober little duck now because I don't drink either because it makes me sick. And now that I'm experiencing manic states, I will be going back to therapy because I learned how to cope with and deal with hypomania. Mania, I need to make sure that I'm talking to the right people. I'm currently looking for a therapist who is also spiritual and won't invalidate my spirituality or my beliefs because I still believe in everything that I said I believed in. I believe in God and angels and aliens because I believe in science and history and it's what's told through us through our oldest history books written by people who lived in an entirely different world who spoke a language that we don't know and that we translated and I respect my elders and I respect the history of the world and I respect that we don't know everything and we don't understand everything and frankly I think that people human beings have devolved I think that we were meant to be what we used to be maybe we were meant to stay fucking apes because apes are straight up living in nature they can literally wreck a human being if they want and they don't because they're fucking peaceful until you fuck with them they just hang out and have sex and, and eat and hang with their babies and hang out in the fucking river like apes have it good we're the monsters and we're weak as shit we had to build guns you know what i mean and i believe that we did have a lot more like intuition and connection with the spiritual world but technology took over i have my own beliefs about philosophy and time and history and who we are as humans and i will never stop being an individual who thinks freely that being said i'm also mentally ill they're not mutually exclusive i believe especially now with these experiences i have a lot to offer the world and i have a lot of knowledge and insight that i can share but I love to see silver linings and the silver lining to this is I feel like 
I can now serve as a precedent or a spokesperson for mental health, which I have always tried to do and now I feel like I get to really do. You get what you ask for. <laughs> and I feel like we're in this fucking simulation where everybody pretends now like mental health matters, destigmatize mental health, and if people are going through a mental health issue, still let's attack them and make fun of them and maybe a decade later we'll free them and as far as mania or hypomania goes, just because somebody's manic doesn't mean they're dangerous to themselves or anybody else. Just because somebody's saying things in a way that you don't like or that you don't understand or that you don't agree with or you find offensive in some way does not mean that they're dangerous and does not mean that you should be calling the police and putting their life in danger and wasting the resources. If I wasn't actually like a sane person and had a good head on my shoulders and had my fucking chakras balanced and practice yoga and eat healthy and really fucking check in with myself and journal, if I had seen those cops and tried to run, if I would have tried to attack them, if I would have freaked out and screamed hysterically or kicked my feet around or like caused chaos, like I could have been really hurt or I could have been taken to a mental hospital and I wasn't because even though I was in a manic episode, that doesn't mean that I am need to be locked away and need like treatment or adult supervision 24 seven or to be shot with medication like no just let me live in my fucking little nest that i built like i'm a pretty i'm a pretty solitary person like i spend a lot of time alone i i spend a lot of time with agoraphobia and really severe anxiety i do have a, a ocd adhd uh cptsd um a doctor once told me that I'm likely autistic, but I didn't pursue an official diagnosis because if you're autistic in America, you can't adopt a baby. Like, there's so many things that are wrong with our systems. It's insane. Like, it's so hard to adopt a baby in general. And if you're autistic, which there's so many varying degrees of autism and so many people with autism may be better equipped parents than people who are deemed mentally normal or typical it's just all fucked and i spent a lot of time thinking about this shit but i'm not a danger to myself or anybody else um but i do appreciate anybody's concern if you called out of concern but please don't do that thank you <laughs> i love you okay so like I said, when I was doing the intro to this video, this is an ongoing story. So right now there's been three videos. I'm not sure how many parts you guys saw, but I saw three parts when before I filmed this video. And that's basically her explanation of everything that happened. Hello? Everything that happened, you know, last week during her manic episode. And whatever the reason was that she was going through this, that she was posting all these things, whatever, I wish her well. If it was performative, that's a shame. Um, I think personally, I said this in the video, my last video I posted about Gabby Hanna, I said that I think that she was cognizant enough to see the amount of attention she was getting, and that's why she kept posting um, during her episode. But I did think, in fact, that she was having an episode. But I think that it was, per I think that she knew how many views she was getting. So she kept deciding to post it. That's my, that's my views on everything. But now she's deleted it. It's because she was saying some really, really shitty things during this episode, you guys. And you know what? I think that she thinks that if she deletes them, then it's going to go away and no one's going to hear it. So what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to go ahead and play you as many of those TikToks as I can that don't have really loud music in the background. Because here's the thing, you guys, if it has really loud music in the background, I can't play that on my YouTube channel or else I'll get demonetized. I don't want to get demonetized. So I'm going to play as many of those as I can for you guys so that you can see exactly what she was saying, because I don't think it's okay. Black people are inherently so much cooler than white people because they were raised with Jesus, mostly. They were told to respect them. Keep your So, black women especially naturally embody the Holy Spirit because black mothers 
are always left to raise their babies alone when the father leaves. It's almost like the mothers depended on God to get them through. And that white men were like, oh, black people are powerful. That's scary. And instead of saying, hey, black people, hey, Native American Indians, you guys seem to be really peaceful and happy on your land. We just came here on this boat because we didn't like our own So now we're here in yours. It's ours now, baby. White people aren't evil. They just weren't born near Jesus. But I was, baby, I'm from Lebanon. Son of John. Words have meaning. This whole time, this whole time, her name was Gabrielle Hannah, Angel Gabriel, descendant of St. John the Baptist of Jesus Christ, our Savior. No one took the time. It's the second coming, baby. Believe me or don't, I've been crucified publicly for years. Scream don't, baby. Turns out the truth. What's Jesus Christ in spirit? I'm sorry, sweetie. I'm gonna keep reminding you that I'm Middle Eastern. And I have always been Middle Eastern. But for some reason, isn't it so weird that the world insists on seeing me as white? <sighs> because if I was a woman of color, as I am, thank you, Jesus, you might have to fucking repent for the way you mistreated us. You know what I mean? I get it. The good news is we forgive you. <laughs> yeah, I keep telling you guys that. I'm Middle Eastern. I traveled from Lebanon, a Maronite crusader of the Catholic Church. The Maronite Church, not the Roman Empire, not the Roman Catholic Church, the Maronites. I grew up in a black neighborhood. I was actually the only white girl in my neighborhood outside of my sisters, but I rode the school bus alone. I was the only white girl on my school bus. And here's a bit of irony. They made me sit in the front. All the cool kids sat in the back and they sang and they did chants and they bullied the fuck out of me. They twisted my hair, they pulled it, they called me names. They didn't let me play with them because I wasn't like them. Hi, Fred. Radio, oh, hi, babe. But my best friends at school were still the black girls because they were the kindest. They grew up with less than the white girls, but I didn't fit anywhere because I was poor, but I was white, but I was also Middle Eastern, so I wasn't white, but I wasn't black, so I was still white. We used words like ashy and nappy to describe dry skin or knots in our hair. And then I went to college and somebody called me a motherfucking racist because I said nappy hair. I've been calling my hair nappy for literally 18 years at that point. And I was fucking confused because I thought nappy just meant I have to brush my fucking hair. And I thought that ashy just meant that I needed to put on lotion. But I guess only black girls can say those words. Candace Owens. You know. Hey. Right on, sister. God bless the U.S. She bleeds red. Alexander Hamilton. Why do you write like you're running out of time? What did Eliza have that Alexander Hamilton didn't? Faith. The orphanage. I'm erasing myself from the narrative. She had her legacy. A Southern mother fucking Democratic Republican. One. A mother fucking Democratic Republican. One. 
motherfucking Southern Democratic Republican. When did we split that? Do you remember that thing they teach us when we're kids about uh, the classroom of kids and half of them get red shirts and half of them get blue shirts and they don't say what the shirts are about, but they see what happens. They study the little lab rats, right? And the kids amongst themselves notice the color and separate into groups because some of them were given red shirts and some of them were given blue. It's as simple as black and white. Some cats are black. Some cats are white. I told you this in my first book. Did you read your fucking homework, kids? No, it's okay. Some cats are black. Some cats are white. Some are gray. Some have all types of colors and spots. Some of them are missing a leg. Um, <laughs> someone from home, yo, what's up? <laughs> My Syrian queen from back home. <laughs> she said, yo, what's up? <laughs> and another thing I've had to learn is humility. But I do want to remind everybody that because I can do all things through Christ, who is my savior, I am an accomplished author of two. New York Times best-selling poetry books. I have around or more than 20 million followers around the entire world. And some of them left me, and some of them betrayed me, and I never stopped being kind and loving everything I have and making the best of it and dedicating my life to saving the world and channeling genius and the power that so many men have used for corporate greed. And I figured out how to channel it for humanity. Is it because I'm a woman of color? Believe me or don't, I do care. It's your choice. I still bleed, I still die, but I have risen. Friends, would you like to rise? Because I can help. Bye. Hey guys, it's actually kind of stressful being a woman of color a young woman of color in a white as fuck rich cunty neighborhood. God bless this cunt. Hey TikTok, hey Gen Z, I got a question for you. <laughs> Cause I can't sleep, <laughs> but I can see. Why are you so accepting of the idea of dissociative identity disorder? where little kids decide that they can switch personalities whenever they want and they all have different names and wear different clothes and they have their own little room in the house that you built in your mind and here's how you get to it. <sighs> I feel like someone else now. Did you fucking meditate and create something with your imagination? It's almost as if you create your own reality and because you don't have faith in God and because you didn't just say God, I'm kind of fucking scared. I believe in you. Will you please only allow me to see what you want me to see? Please only allow me to hear the truth. Please give me clarity. So would you rather the kind colored girl stay in the ghetto like you want us to? Should I just stay out of the nice beautiful neighborhood with the wonderful school district for my children? to avoid the assholes. Nah, I'll be good. <laughs> okay, so you heard it there, you guys. You heard as many of them as I could in it include in this video. I know that there were so many of them and a lot of them she was playing really loud music in the background of this TikToks um, when she was having this episode. So I played as many as I could for you. But you guys, like, it's not good. 
I am a white woman, so I don't want to speak um, very in depth on this situation because I feel like I don't have the right to say that somebody can call themselves colored or not when they're Lebanese or not. But I do know that a lot of people had a huge issue with it. I would love to have a conversation in the comment section down below. Do you think that her being a Lebanese woman, is she part Lebanese or full Lebanese? I'm not sure. But do you think that her being a Lebanese is gives her the right to call herself a colored woman? I don't know. It, 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 for me, it felt like kind of ick. It felt kind of like very cringe. And for me, at the surface, it didn't feel right that she should be saying that. And like I said, I don't know. Educate me in the comment section down below. If I'm wrong on this, I want to be educated. But I felt like it was kind of like, ugh, ugh, like, ugh, like you shouldn't be saying that um, when I was listening to these as they were happening. I was kind of taken aback by them, if you will. And um, I, I want to have that conversation open in the comment section down below because, like I said, I don't have any room to say if that's okay or not because I am I am a white woman, right? I am a white woman. Um, so let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about that. And aside from that, you guys, I think that's going to be it for today's video. I just really wanted to sh put those out there so that they were out there. I wanted to um, kind of show you guys what she has been saying um, in response to everything that has been happening with her manic episodes and now they're over and what her response is now after the fact, now that the dust has settled, I wanted to kind of let you know what was going on with that. In my opinion, it's still the same. I think that no matter what she says, I think that, you know, she was having a manic episode. That's what she said in her videos. And I think that, you know, she, at the time she was going through that, but she was cognizant of the attention she was getting and the money she was going to be making from that TikTok creator fund. Let us not forget. So I think she kept on with it. Um, I, there, there's nothing in my mind that you can do to make me not believe that. That's truly what I believe from the situation. So my opinion has not changed based on what she has said, um, but I wanted to share what she said to you guys because, you know, that's what I'm here for. Anyway, <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, um, give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel down below. Don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified of all my future videos when they do post. Remember, all Shelly Bells ring the bell. And yeah, if you enjoyed today's video, YouTube should be suggesting a couple more down here for you to choose from. So I'd love it if you did that. And aside from that, you guys, I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.